Hello and welcome to video 5 in the Python tutorial series. Uh, my name is Steve and today we'll be looking at uh, two new skills that, that we'll be integrating into our programs. Escape characters or escape sequences and different data types. And we kind of alluded to this in the previous four lessons. Um, the last lesson we introduced the programming window which is this window over here on the right. and coupled that with some print statements and some input statements. So today we're going to add two new skills with that, escape characters and different data types. And at the end of this video, we'll have the first challenge program. Now the intent is to have a suggested program to write at the end of each video to see if you've kept up with the skills up to this point. So today we're going to introduce your first challenge program after we go over escape characters and we go over data types and we're going to see if you can use the skills that you've gotten from the first five videos to write a somewhat interesting program. Now we're not reprogramming Skyrim, we're not we're not making some super graphically oriented program, but it will be the building blocks for some cool programs that we'll be writing in the future. And hopefully after watching the first five videos you'll be able to execute that fairly painlessly. So without further ado, let's get started looking at escape characters and data types. Okay, so the first skill that we're going to be looking at in this video is escape characters or escape sequences. Escape sequences are simply instructions that can be path, passed to Python in print statements and in input statements that instruct your program to do some simple tasks such as passing a tab, creating a new line, printing a backslash, printing single quotes, printing double quotes. Very simple stuff. Now I know this isn't the most exciting topic in the world but it is something that's definitely worth noting. You may be asking yourself why would I want to use an escape se sequence to print a single quote or a double quote? I can do that already. For example if I were to type print that's the boy's house, because I use the double quotes as the delimiter, I'm printing a single quote just fine. When I run this program, I will save this as test.py as I normally do for all my test programs here. I can see it printed the single quote just fine. Likewise, if I were to use the single quotes as the delimiter, I could put a sentence like the boy said that is my house. And I can end it with the single quote delimiter. When I run this program, everything's executing on the shell like I think it would, or that it, like I would expect it to. So why would I need to use an escape sequence? Well, that's because for right now, I'm just going to have it print a uh, blank line. What if I wanted to do a sentence like, the boy said, that's my house. I used the single quote, or the double quote delimiter, and then when I got to the quotation mark, Python interpreted that as the end of the string. And I can see there's a problem by looking at the color coding of that particular line. The word that isn't showing up in green, which is the color Python passes when something is in a string. If I were to run this program right here, I get a syntax error. So maybe what I want to do is change my double quotes to single quotes as the delimiter. So I'm going to go ahead and change the double quote at the end and the beginning. And I see I've got a similar problem. The boy said, that's my house. Now all of a sudden, S, my house, is in black. That's because Python interprets the string up until the apostrophe in that. Because the, a single quote shows up, Python interprets that as the end of the string, and of course that's going to give us the same syntax error. Now this could be a problem. I don't want to have to rewrite all of my strings so that I make sure that I'm never using quotation marks and uh, apostrophes in the same sentence. That's where an escape character is going to become very handy. By simply putting a backslash in front of that single quote, what Python is instructed to do is ignore whatever comes after 
the backslash. That is, by having that backslash in front of the apostrophe, Python is instructed to just see that as an apostrophe. Don't take it as any sort of special character. Don't use it as a delimiter. Just take it at face value for being an apostrophe. When I do that and run this program, see, even though it looks goofy over here, when it prints out, it looks completely normal. Now let's go back to our first example. Let's take out our escape character and use the quotation marks as our delimiters. We have the exact same problem that we saw initially. That is, this word that here is not being interpreted as part of the string. Simply put, I can put a backslash in front of that. That tells Python to ignore it and see it as a single quote. Now, I've still got a bit of a problem here. When I run this program, I'm still going to get an error, the end of line while scanning string literal. That's because I have two quotation marks in here. If I were to put a backslash in front of the second quotation mark, this line right here is telling Python those two quotation marks shouldn't be interpreted as anything other than a printed character. Now when I run, I can see I get the exact same output. The boy said, that's my house. I'm not getting any string errors because the escape sequence, this backslash quotation mark, is telling Python, hey, you don't have to interpret those as any kind of special character, just print them. It looks a little goofy in the code, but it prints just fine. All right, so the next escape character that we're going to look at, or escape sequence we're going to look at, the escape character is the backslash, the sequence is the backslash paired with something else. The next escape sequence that we're going to look at is what I find to be by far the most useful of them all. That is backslash n, which instructs Python to move the cursor to the next line. So I'm going to erase these four lines that come from my uh, previous example here, so that I have an empty program again. And to build on something that we looked at in lesson number four, I like to use the input statement to make your programs a little bit more interesting, to allow the user to interact with your program. And you can do this, say, um, I want to store the variable or store in the variable name input what is your name and I'm going to put a colon at the end and then I'm going to have it print the variable name so when I run this program I'm going to hit F5 to print it it shows up here on the left and it says what is your name I'm going to type in Steve and it prints Steve. Well, what if I want this input to be on the next line? What if I, instead of having the what is your name input being on the same line, I want it to show up on the next line down? Now, I, there's a couple ways I can do this. Maybe what I want to do is use a print statement that says, what is your name? And then I want to have an input statement name equals input just the colon and now it says what is your name it's got a colon on the next line I'm gonna type in Steve you see the the program in large part works the exact same but I think that looks a little bit cleaner it looks a little bit more user-friendly but it took me two lines of code to do this that's not a big deal for smaller programs, but one of the things that you're going to want to do as you write larger and larger programs is make them more efficient. Try and do as much as you can in a single line of code instead of expanding it out to take dozens of lines of codes. Or In this case, we're using two lines of code where we can use one line of code pretty easily. And this is where the escape sequence is going to become very useful. I'm going to go back to our original program here, name equals input, what is your name? I'm going to use the backslash n escape sequence to instruct Python that I want a new line. And so after name, but before the colon, I'm going to type backslash n. 
Now in code, that looks a little bit confusing, but when Python encounters this sequence right here, it's not going to print anything to the screen. It's simply going to take that as a carriage return and print whatever comes next on a new line. So if I were to run this program, you can see the effect is the exact same as what I was able to do in two lines of code earlier, except now I've got it consolidated into one line of code. Now I can do this as much as I want in a single line. Let's go ahead and print my backslash n name backslash n is backslash n Steve. This looks like a confusing line of code, and it's not easy to read. When Python executes this left to right, it's going to print my. It's going to see this backslash, interpret it as an, as an escape sequence, put name on a new line because that's what is printed before the next escape sequence starts. It encounters this escape sequence, and now prints is it encounters a final escape sequence and prints Steve, and that's the end of the string. So when I execute this program, see it prints, my name is Steve. Each word is appearing on a new line, and that's because of the escape sequence of backslash n. And the last escape sequence we're going to look at is backslash t, and that simply instructs Python to put a tab in in place of the escape sequence. So right now, this line says my name is Steve. Let's print and replace all the backslash ends with backslash t. My backslash t name backslash t is backslash t Steve. When I run this program here, in the shell you can see the escape sequences don't print anything they simply instruct Python to put a carriage, or a, 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 not a carriage, that's silly, that's for return, uh, just a standard press of the tab key in between all of the characters. This makes creating tables and charts a little bit easier. It's still not super intuitive, and it takes some work and some finagling to do, but that's the last escape sequence that I think is worth noting. So if we were to print tab backslash t tab backslash t tab backslash t tab, we've got four tabs and four backslash t's, or three backslash t's. So it simply prints tab, 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 tab because every time Python encounters the escape sequence in a print statement, it's going to try and figure out what to do with it. Now, if you use an escape sequence that isn't an escape sequence, uh, you might get some weirdness in your programs. Uh, the most common mistake is using an escape sequence that isn't an actual escape sequence. So let's say um, I'm going to erase these lines right here and just go with my one print statement. I've got three escape sequences in there, backslash ends, so my name is Steve, each executes on a separate line, similar to what you see down here in the shell. Now if I were to replace those backslash ends with an escape sequence that doesn't exist, like a backslash Q, when I run this program, I thought I was just going to interpret it literally and print backslash Q because that's not an escape sequence that Python is familiar with. Um, remember that Python is also case sensitive. Let's say I were to use capital N's instead of lowercase n's. When I run that, I'm going to get this Unicode error. Now, we'll talk more about Unicode and bytes and stuff like that. Just know if you get this weird Unicode, uni, I almost called it unicorn error, a Unicode error, malformed backslash n character escape, that's simply using an errant escape sequence and that's caused by using a capital N instead of a lowercase n. And there's a couple other times where you'll run into that. 
But remember that Python is case sensitive and using an improper escape sequence with a capital letter might cause you some problems.